Hello, everyone. Welcome to our day three of our webinar. I'm so glad you guys are all participating. The questions you guys have been asking are fabulous. Um, I'm just going to give one more minute for people to join. Um, please be checking those links that we've been sending out of the video recordings and make sure you have access to those. At the end of this week, we will be sending out a comprehensive of all five trainings um, to any of those who are registered. So please make sure that you are registered for the sessions. Um, and I'll just give about one minute and then we'll get started. Thank you guys so much. Okay, let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about building a clear pathway, um, specifically as it relates to XPath basics and adding clean views. Um, depending on the time we have, clean views may be put into um, tomorrow's webinar as well. It's something I've discussed quite a bit because it helps you validate the data that you are getting um, and make sure that you have not just validate it, but you have a complete set of data. We've also, our Best Buy agent did hit an error, so we'll be able to walk through how we can correct that and using the techniques that we have today on how to build a clear pathway. So our purpose today is to build an agent that gathers data more efficiently by implementing clear pathways um, or clear pathway techniques. So to think about our pathways, we have to go back to the fundamentals of our harvesters. Harvesters are what get the data. We write this beautiful recipe in our agent builder, and then we hand that over to our harvesters. And our harvesters take that information or those set of steps and execute it. So it, our writing skills of our agent will determine how well our harvesters do at performing our recipe. So we can make it really clear where they know exactly where they're going to. Um, there's no guessing. They don't have to open multiple doors in order to find the information they need or what we need. They can just go straight to it. Or they can drive around trying to find that information. And um, maybe they have to go down a, a dead end in order to go back out and find the information you need. Um, it's kind of like when Websites are a new, an old town that's just developing. So there's new roads being put in all the time. So when you're working with your agents and building agents inside of your builder, think about the website structure and how it's going to be changing. We want to build a pathway or an address or filter that will last so that even if there are updates made, you'll still be able to find the information you need. Um, a lot of times in the example with our roadways would just be instead of using landmarks like turn left at the big tree and the apartment buildings, it would be just going directly to the address. Um, if we use those vague descriptors, then it has our harvesters guessing about which door or which piece of information to select. So. As we're going through these pathways, um, Mozenda cre use, uses a method to specify the location called XPath. XPath gets its name because um, it uses a path notation to navigate through the structure of HTML. By default, Mozenda creates a XPath for you. In this specific example, this first line is the relative x path and then the second one is an absolute x path i'm so glad you told me this that you're not able to see my screen so let me back up and we'll get started are you guys able to see that now Thank you. You guys are fabulous. You guys missed the whole journey. We were going on, there was all these doors and a yellow, a yellow one you needed to select. <laughs> and so now we're all here. Thank you guys. I'm glad that you're able to hear as well. So 
going just a quick review. I feel like visuals always help us uh, solidify the knowledge that we've learned. Um, so as we write clear pathways, we'll be able to find that address to the house instead of weaving through a spaghetti bowl of roads. Um, and let me show you this example of our XPath. Um, so this is the default XPath that is used when Mozendo creates an XPath. So this first one is relative and the second one is absolute, meaning that it's starting at the very, very beginning at HTML and then going down layer by layer until it gets to the piece of data that we want selected. A relative one um, starts somewhere close to what we want and then goes down from there. There's a line one and a line two because you can write, just like we had our alternate X path, we can have two different options for our harvesters to look for that information. And each one of these lines let our harvesters know, check here, but if you don't find it, try this path next. These are really messy. When I first started using Mozenda, these made no sense to me. Um, so we want our X paths to look something like this. This is in our Best Buy agent that we created yesterday, but this makes a lot more sense. It's saying, um, I can read the word SKU item list and skew items so I can put together, oh, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the skew item here. Like it's going to be something specific. And the X path is for the product name list. So I can associate those two and have an easier, easier time identifying it. I apologize, my um, screen is pausing every now and again. So I appreciate your engagement in helping me know I, I haven't had that happen before. Thank you. So then the clearer our X path is to read, the better it will be um, for us to to identify not only that piece of information for our harvesters, but when we go back to troubleshoot, it will help us identify where that's at in the HTML. Additionally, when we write a list, our instead of having to start at um, a previous landmark, say if you're trying to find a house and Instead of giving you the address to my house, I give you an address to um, my parents' house and then navigate from there. Or maybe I give you an address to a person in the similar city and then I direct you back to my house. That's a lot of extra work instead of just directing me to, um, to the piece of data I want. So in this X path, that dot dot slash is giving me it's moving me out from where I was before and then making me look, uh, then directing me to the piece of data I want. We've talked about HTML and how it has a hierarchy structure, similar to the one we discussed yesterday. We have a parent whose child is title and head and body are actually siblings of each other because they're on the same level of the HTML. Below body is H1 and P. So these H1 and P are siblings and also children of body. If H1 or P had another element nested inside of it, it would be a grandchild of body. Knowing this structure will help because as you use XPath, there's it uses a sequence of expressions to locate what you want. So it has an access, a node test, or predicates. And we're gonna go through each one of these specifically. An access specifier specifies the direction you wanna navigate from node to node um, to locate that step. So we could go to the child, 
we could go to a descendant, meaning anything underneath it, or we can search for my the individual node, that same thing, or anything beneath it. We can search for a parent, an ancestor, following sibling. That would tie back to if I wanted to select P and I was on H1, then I could just write, go to the following sibling and select P. You'll notice that there are some shortcuts. So I can either write slash child colon colon, or I can just write a slash and it will mean the same thing. For these that don't have any writings in the abbreviated syntax, you'll just write the exact words, add a colon colon, and write the name of the node you'd like selected. We also have the attribute. Um, we shorten this with an A. You'll see this used quite a bit as we're working through our X paths today. When we have a dot, this signifies look at yourself for this information. This happens a lot when we're creating a list where we've created it based off of the title. So when we need the actual title or the product name, then we'll just, Mozenda by default, we'll just add a dot to specify what you found before. I want that again. A node test allows you to test the node that you've selected or written for. Um, you can use, use this by writing the specific name. In our example before, it could be head, body, H1, or P. Or you can use that asterisk or that star, um, which is a wild card that will say match all nodes to what I just wrote for. For predicates, these are filters um, that help you get not just to that specific item, but it will filter out those that do not match that criteria. We write these by having um, that predicate expression in two brackets and square brackets. You can use numbers, you can use different functions, you can even use different operators. Um, so one of my favorites is just using the brackets and adding a one in between those brackets or a two to specify where it's located in the HTML. Here's some other common predicates that you can use. Um, on this example, we have our double slash, which means search for anything, including myself, and check to say, make sure the tag name is div. This normalized space is removing any extra white space before or after a specific value. We'll be using this example quite a bit today. This is search for div that contains the attribute of class and the value of address block. Additionally, we can write two XPaths, kind of like our alternate XPaths that we had before on line one and line two. But instead of having um, them on separate lines, we can write them on the same line and then separate them with a line. And combine different attributes with that same tag. Um, so that we're looking to make sure that the div has info, but it does not say advert on it. So to break down how you would write this syntax, we need to understand what an HTML element looks like or um, when it becomes more complex. Every HTML element has a tag name. We've talked about H1, P, H stands for header and it goes to six, so that will always be a header. Um, we have P, which is a paragraph, and A is going to be for a link. If you'd like to learn more about those common tag names, there are some great resources online that share, um, share some of that dialogue if you just 
search for XPath um, definitions, W3 schools, will walk you through what each of those tag names would be so that as you're working on some more uh, websites, they can help you break those down. We also have an attribute. This could be our class, an ID, um, but it's usually followed right after the tag name. And a tag can have multiple attributes. The value um, describes the attribute. So in my case, if we wanted to find me, I would say the tag name is Georgia, the attribute is hair, and the value is brown. So they would know that I would be selecting Georgia. That would be the filter I could use is specify the hair color. In the three dots, this is any inner text. This is usually what is displayed on the web page, but it can also have more HTML elements. So on the website, this is what you would view. You have photo, you have your price, you have quantity, and then you have click here to go to the product details page. This is what's visible. Behind the scenes, this is what it would look like. We would have this div that contains span siblings that have price, quantity, and click here to go to product details. You also notice there's an image here. So when we go back to our website, if I wanted to select all of this information, I would be selecting this entire div. Um, and this is what would be returned to me in Mozenda. But if I was just looking for price, um, then I would want to start with div and just select this first span of data. And we see this very often when we are hovering over um, different nodes in Mozenda. We can just highlight over price and select price when we point and click. This is because it's selecting this specific node of data. So if we wanted to write to get price, um, we would need to write it using the syntax of our access and our predicates. We would start by writing search for, I'd specify the tag name and attach the predicate or the filter for that spe specific piece of data. So when I do select this price, I would say search for a span that has the attribute of class. And make sure that attribute equals price. This in dark gray is what would be returned to me. So we're going to practice. We have some helpful hints. We have search for all descendants, um, look for a direct child, something relative, move to a parent. If there's a dot, we can even search for that inner text. We have characteristics we can use by using this attribute. We have a contains and a not contains. If I want to select all this information, I want to select the parent to both price, quantity, and click here to see product details, meaning I want this div to be the item that I select. So I would write search for everything and look for the word div. I'd add the filter that specifies that it has an attribute of class and contains the word product. When I do my node test in the dev tools, then it will select this piece of data. And the price, quantity, and click here to see product details is what would be displayed to me. If I want to see just product details, then I would, I can use this dot 
to specify that I want to look for the inner text that says product details. This is helpful when you are writing a path that doesn't have anything that's really clear in the HTML, but the text you can read. So I'm going to say search for anything, including myself. Make sure the name is span. I'm adding my predicate brackets to specify what I want to look for and writing contains the inner text of product details. It would then select this note of detail because I specified that I want it to select the word span and that's what tag name is right here. When I want to select quantity, we can do a shortcut. We could start at div, or we can just skip all that and say search for anything that is the second span, and then it would select that quantity. To get, uh, if I want to select more details URL, or if it's not selecting this, then I would want to write a pathway that contain that goes all the way down and either uses this attribute of class for details. I can use this class more details. I can use this attribute and say look for this attribute and make sure the words say product. There's a lot of ways to write X paths and it's however you feel the most comfortable writing them. So in this case, I'm going to go down to the A tag and I'm going to use the contains, specify the attribute and write products. If I added a slash dot dot, that would bring me to select more details and give me all of this as a result. We're going to jump a little bit ahead so that we can practice this um, all together. A lot of times when we walk through this or as I've taught people XPath, they feel comfortable with the concept as we're talking through it. But then when you have to do it on your own, it's the most terrifying thing because it gets you outside your comfort zone. So after we do this, I would recommend using uh, this on any website, just practicing, try to fail. Um, and if you utilize our support team and let them know like, hey, I'm trying to learn XPath and I'm practicing on this agent. Um, this is what I have so far. And they can talk you through that while you write it. That's going to be a great way to learn as well. In this example, um, I really want us to focus on making sure that our words match what the values are, as well as um, the case sensitivity. Because if I said search for anything that does not contain the attribute of products, it has an S. So in turn, it would return this div because it does not have an S and it would be selected. This is an absolute X path starting at the very top and going down. If I'm doing a node test and I follow this and the harvester or the dev tools follow this, it's going to go HTML, div, find the second span, one, two, and then give me an A tag. But there is no A tag, it ends right here. So I would need to rewrite that with a three. Or, if I really wanted to just make sure I got right there, I could cross out all of that information and just say, look for an A tag because there's only one in this HTML. We can use a wildcard in order to specify what we want, not necessarily using the name of what we're looking for. Um, so instead of writing div here, I wrote an asterisk. And it's saying, make sure that search for anything that has an attribute of ID and the value of TV 
n has the attribute of class and the value of product. These are not in the same order as this div, but it's creating that filter for it to look, see that it matches, and then bail and return all of this information. So now let's get started. We're going to practice it all together. Um, we're going to first look at our agents where the Best Buy agent it hit an error and just so that we become familiar with where to look for for those errors. I'm going to hover over the eye and it says the capture price whose X path is really ugly was not found on page one. And if I go to my jobs, select my job, I can scroll over and it said, okay, it's the same thing, capture price on page one, it was not found. And it was the same error over here. And it restart index page uh, number nine. And it said that it's having a hard time finding the product, the list name product name list. So we're going to fix this agent and we're going to use our XPath to help us in this instance. Let's see. When you are on this jobs tab, you can click fix an agent and it will open up your agent in the Mozenda agent builder. So this just opened up and it's right to the Best Buy agent. So that that's an easier screen for you guys to see. Um, everything that I do inside the builder, you can do on a web page when it comes to writing XPath. Um, so I'm going to cancel this from loading. It said it wasn't able to find this price. So the first thing that we can do when the price isn't found is we see it over here. Nothing has changed. I can do location, add an alternate location, and click on the price. You'll notice that instead of just having one XPath in our XPath capture price, we actually have two XPaths listed now because we added an alternate XPath there. So now if I test it, um, it will be able, we can see if it will work. I'm looking at this, these XPaths to see if there's anything different between the two. And when we get almost to the last div right here, it has a number one and that last portion has a number two there. So that might have been why we weren't able to get it is because um, the div or that division of the website changed. But we're going to make a custom XPath. Um, I recommend using Best Buy when you're practicing writing XPaths because it's very pretty and it will help you um, really know if you're writing it correctly because it's easy to write with. In this example, we're going to start at the very top, which is our begin item list, product name list. And I want to select, um, right now it's being written off of this title, but I want to start far out. So it's like saying the city. So if it was in um, California, I could say this is for Los Angeles and then in Los Angeles, go directly to this location. So we want to create a larger view or um, a more specific view for it to look at and then narrow in to grab both the title, the price and the reviews. So I'm going to copy this first XPath, go to DevTools, click anywhere in the DevTools, Control F and Control V. And that will, that's your node test. That's where it highlighted the information that I want. To access this little search bar, I did Control F and then I pasted that XPath. Now I want to write something that encompasses like all of these. And so what I can do is 
I could hover over until I have this entire box highlighted, this light green, right click and inspect, and it just pulled up that item for me. I can collapse that, I can build it bigger, but I can see that each one of these lines is part of this LI class so that you guys can participate and see that as well. I'm going to pull up this camera website um, here on Best Buy and zoom in so that you guys can view it as well. I am in Chrome. I right clicked and I inspected. And then I'm going to zoom in. So we can all see that information. This is a little bit better. So we want to encompass this entire block of data. Those thing about using Chrome when you're building XPath is that I can't see it hover over those nodes of data. So I'm going to right click and inspect and it brought me to this LI tag. LI means list. So I'm looking at the list of items. But I don't just want to select this one. I'm creating a list and I want it to go to each one of these. Right now these are siblings. So I'm going to try and find their parent. I'm running into this huge URL. And right above there, I'm highlighting everything, all of those items. And it's this OL, or organized list, with the value of SKU item list. So to me, that's a good place to start. I'm going to copy that attribute class equals Q item list. And I uh, clicked in there and I copied it. I'm going to do control F and say search for everything, including myself, and find anything that has the tag name of OL. You'll see it found a lot of different items. So I want to create a stronger filter. I added my square brackets, an at sign, because I need to specify I'm looking at an attribute. I'm entering in this value and attribute class equals skew item list. And as I paste that there, I'm getting one result. So if I press enter, it just selects that entire box. I want to make sure that I don't just get the box, but I get each one of those items that are nested inside of it. So I'm going to say, go to your child, because this li tag is a child. I can write this by doing a single slash and writing the word child, colon, colon, li, because I specified what I want it named or I can do a single slash and write LI. Now it's getting 24 items right now. And the item that I really don't want it to get is that sponsored Google Nest Cam. So we're gonna see what's the difference between this item versus that item. And right off the bat, I can see that this has an amazing URL that I don't want. So I'm going to try and see if I can use um, a filter to say not to include this URL. But to begin, I'm going to notice the commonalities. When I see each one of these LI tags, they have a value of SKU item. So I'm going to add that to my filter. I'm going to say, look for a class that's equal to skew-item. Then, before I close it, because I want to add some more, I'm going to say, let's see, let's look. This has an attribute of data click beacon, and this one does not. 
So I'm going to use that as an attribute. And I'm going to say, let's not, so and not contains the attribute of data click beacon that has the word, let's see, I don't want that data click, I don't want to type all of this. So I could use like that second word or even this word cat. So I'm going to say, look for the word cat. And if it contains cat, I don't want it. Down here in the bottom right hand corner, I can see that I, instead of having 24 results, I have 23 results. So I'm going to use this, copy it, open up Mozenda, and for my product list, I'm going to delete all of these and just put in my one XPath because I know that's pretty stable. I'm using these attributes and values that the web developers are going to use as well. So now for my product name, my XPath is just a dot because it's saying, well, find what's relative and give it back. So let's look at our capture text action. It's not giving us what we need. It's giving us everything that's in here. Um, we could do a couple things. I could right click, reassign the location if I don't want to write more XPaths. And now that it has a more familiar area um, to look for, it will be faster at getting those that information. I can also write a custom XPath for each one of these items. So let's take a look to see what, because price is giving us an error. It's saying, oh, I'm not finding this one. So I could do location, add an alternate, click right here. My XPath is a lot prettier, but it's not very readable. Um, we're going to just write two more and then we're going to try on an, another website as well. So let's do price. I'm going to right click and inspect. And XPaths take patience. You're not going to know exactly where everything is right away. And that's OK. That's normal. Um, a lot of times we're asked, like, oh, how did you find that? Like, how did you know to look up or down or to the right? And a lot of it is just being patient and reading what it says. So we're going to do, do I change my mind. Let's do this review. I'm going to inspect there. And this is really nice. It says, it says span C dash reviews. So it sounds like that means customer reviews. So I'm going to try and select. I like that that one says average. So we're going to write on top of what we wrote before because we're using that as a landmark. And I'm going to say look for a span. And then adding an at sign in between square brackets that says class equals C reviews. Let's see if it found it. And it didn't. So I need to write it a little bit more specific. Let's see where it's starting from. And I may need it to go down to this div. And then it can go down to the span. Let's try another thing where we say, look for all of your kids, um, including yourself. So we're going to do slash slash span. And then I was able to find it. We could go more specific, but we kind of, we made it quicker. So this is going to be this slash slash span is going to be the X path that I use for my star rating. And I'm going to test it by putting it in here. It will turn red if it's not good. 
and at my capture text, it looks like it's getting both of those. Um, so we want it to just get the star rating. So I'm going to add onto this because in our XPath that we wrote before, it was selecting both the total and the average. So I'm going to add, once you find the span that has customer reviews, make sure that it contains uh, or we could do we'll do one for total reviews there's so many ways to write it so we can say make sure that that span contains the uh, the class attribute that says C dash review dash average. I'm going to close this and write another span. Oh, because it's that same one. So we're going to make it the total because it's going to be nested inside of there. So I'm going to say make sure that that span underneath it has C total reviews. And I was able to find the total reviews there. With the XPath that we wrote, we're going to use some refinements to get that information that we want. So if we, um, I'm going to use total reviews, replace that with our new XPath. And then for star rating, that capture text result is still giving us this, um, the star, the quantity of reviews as well. So I'm going to right click click properties, sorry, right click and go to refine capture text. And I'm going to do a capture definition. I'm going to say, give me everything before that first parentheses. And it's going to remove anything that has a parentheses and after. I can go through each one of these items, 24, to make sure that that's listed and it is correct. So I'm going to save that, and now I've removed those total reviews from the star rating. On my total review, I'm going to refine that one as well, because I do not want the parentheses there. Um, so I'm going to right click, and I'm going to refine capture text, and I'm going to do a content replacement. And I'm going to say, whenever you find a parentheses, remove it, and then when you find uh, close parentheses, remove it with, replace it with nothing. Right now, it's just finding that one location or that one piece on repeat. So we're going to have to, we're going to test it and see how it goes. One of my favorite things is writing like a big X path that helps us get to the information and then using our other techniques of reassigning. Um, because depending on the time that you have allocated, a lot of um, you may not have the time to write X paths for everything. If you do and you have time to practice this, uh, then it's going to make you a really powerful user. If not, then uh, we have other techniques to help you get to where you need to be. Looks like our click item was not registering. We're going to reassign this. It did not find it on the first one, so let's reassign that one. Okay, so we could do, um, because we have a click item and we have a URL, something that we could do is add an action to load a new page and actually instead of clicking just say load the product URL instead of clicking 
then on our click item, we can delete that. And our load page, we're going to change it from going to page three to go to page two. Save that. And then delete our click item. And delete page three. So now instead of going in and clicking on the URL, it's actually going to load the URL and get that information. So let's start this over and test it really quickly. We're going to go back to our really fun horoscope example. Um, tomorrow we're going to be comparing the data between um, those horoscopes throughout this past week and seeing what is common between them and what is different. If you notice now our click item, we removed it and we're still able to get the information on the other cameras because we have that load product URL. So if anything hit an error here, if we go back to our builder, um, some another place that I looked when I was trying to identify the error was in um, the harvesting results of the data because I knew that we were capturing the product URL so if we hit an error on any of it, then I could copy this URL and then load that into my browser and be able to troubleshoot what exactly happened. We're gonna go back to our wonderful horoscope ones. We're going to write an XPath to get each one of these items specifically. So we're going to right click and inspect. And at first, I'll, it selected this image. It says Im image equals ALT equals Aries. But I want to go and see if there's something that would be a little bit more specific. So I'm going to go to its parent and close that then go above there to this div and the div selects everything and underneath each one of the in in this grid each one of these has an a tag so i'm going to say search for a div that contains or just do an at sign and then list the attribute that i want i wanted to go down to each one of these a tags so i'm going to do a and it'll filter through each one of those. Let's open up our builder for our horoscope so we can see that as well. Expats are a hard, um, a hard concept to practice. Um, so, Pat yourself on the back. You guys are doing a great job. And the more you practice it, the better. So we're going to open um, our agent for horoscopes. is excited okay so for if you ever have your navigation window go where you don't want it to you can always drag it and put it to um, into one of the tabs so that it's easier to see your screen so our signless expath it's looking for section two then going to the division a and then grabbing the header so in our dev tools, if I do control F and then paste what I found, it's selecting that title. So we're going to write, use that X path that we wrote before for free horoscopes. 
and paste that here. Then I want it to say, go down to A. And then once I grab A, I want it to grab this header H3, because that's what we really want. I'm going to copy that. And then in my sign list, I'm going to delete everything and paste this. So now my XPath is more readable. It's saying search for um, search for a division of the website that has the attribute of class and is a grid six. Then find a header. So my sign is just relative to that. It's just looking for the header. And the URL, it's saying to go up to the parent. Um, which is what we want. We want it to go up and find A. So we can go up to the parent called A. I always like to test it inside the dev tools. This may just be enough to specify go to your parent. So we'll keep the URL as it is. This dot at the beginning will specify to look back at where we started our list and then build from there. Let's look at our capture text preview, make sure that's looking okay. It looks like it is. Um, for our page two, when we have today, I'm going to right click and inspect. And this has uh, just a P to specify the paragraph. So we want to, we could do a couple things. We could just write for that specific P tag, or we could write for that main container and then go down from there. Um, we'll do some more building as well tomorrow, but I think I'm going to start by just doing this switcher. It says nav class equals switcher. So I'm gonna select class equals switcher Control F, then write search for anything that says nav, and make sure it has the attributes of class and the value of switcher. Then I, instead of going down into what's nested right here, I want it to go to its sibling. So I'm going to write slash following dash sibling colon colon and specify the name P. I'm going to copy this. And then for my X path for today, I can paste that. One of the other great ways to use X path is when it comes to pagination. Uh, when you are rotating through a page and it doesn't seem to stop running, even though you've added the limitations of only paginating twice or three times, there are some tricks to use XPath to look for words in the HTML that say disabled or that specify um, not to click on it anymore. So one example to show our we only have four minutes left, so we'll highlight this a little bit as well tomorrow um, because pagination can be really painful sometimes because it's hard to get, get it to stop and make sure that our dialogue is working correctly with it. Um, it will be the same process of right-clicking and inspecting, but instead of looking for um, attributes, specifically at the beginning, we're going to look to see what changes between the pagination binds. So if there is a not uh, or a disabled or pagination is hidden, then we don't want it to click on it when it says that. And we can specify that as well. Um, let me pull up this site so I can show you a visual.
thank you guys so much for being such awesome attendants and for your help today. Um, it is fantastic to work with you guys. We're going to use our agent that we had on Monday. for the Las Vegas conventions. Because we have these next buttons right here. And if I inspect these, it says, here's an A tag that has list paginator next. So we're going to just write for that. I'm going to say, look for an A tag that has the attribute of class equals list paginator. And it found two, one at the top and one at the bottom. And I'm going to go to the very, very last page and I'm going to right click and inspect that same item. And it says right arrow, chevron right, next page, uh, list, and then underneath that it says list paginator next and equals disabled. So when I'm look, when I do have a paginator that needs to go to the end of the document, I want to write an XPath that says look for this next paginator and click on it, but make sure it does not contain and I'm going to highlight this disabled section. The class list paginator. Because I'm doing a contains, I'm not going to use an equal, I'm going to use a comma and close that. So right here, it won't select it. Um, so let's go back one page and see if this selects any items. I'm going to remove this and just use the word disabled. So we're going to say, look for a class paginator that says next, but does not contain the class of disabled. Let's make sure that's not disabled on more pages. So we have class equals next. Perfect. We are at time, so we can, we'll can we dive in a little bit more of this tomorrow as we're writing our XPath to contain a disabled to stop it from paginating. Uh, again, I really appreciate you guys all attending. We will have another session tomorrow um, where we'll be, be able to discuss how to get better data and validate that data, um, specifically with error handling and views. And um, we'll tie in some of the XPath that we've learned today. And a copy of the recording will be sent out to everybody as well. Thank you guys so much. Bye.